What does a Model T, Ford car and a dead cow have in common? Any ideas? You may be thinking, what the dickens are you going on about? But please do bear with me, because if you know the answer to this, then you have more in common with Steve Jobs than you realise. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brendan. I'm a recovering accountant based here in London, and I help millennials navigate busy lives and make sure that work doesn't suck. So, about that dead cow. Like back in 1913, the Ford Motor Company was a decade old, but it had large ambitions. It had hardly transformed the American life yet. But one day, an employee called Bill Klan, a Ford employee, took a trip to a Chicago slaughterhouse, one of those places where they just disseminate carcasses of animals. Well, there he saw a model of industrial butchering efficiency. Animal carcasses were being moved by overhead trolleys while a series of butchers performed specialised tasks in sequences as the carcass is advanced. As Klein watched this bloody symphony of movement, he had an analogical epiphany. <laughs> Dismantling something, i.e. a carcass, was fundamentally similar to building something, like an engine. Therefore, adopting a moving assembly line at Ford would increase productivity and reduce costs. Well, that's what he felt. If they can kill pigs and cows that way, well, why can't we build cars that way? Clown told his boss upon his return. Well, it's fair to say his boss looked pretty bemused and protested and said, well, actually, the differences are too pronounced, aren't they? I mean, what could flesh and machinery have in common? Here, you've got something else. You've got this and that and pistons and rods and this and the other. Anyway, he said it just wouldn't work. But ultimately, I believe it's the same thing, said Khan. Khan prevailed. And ultimately, the moving of the assembly line wound up with a signature of the Model T in production. It just exploded productivity and enabled the company to cut the price of the car from $575 to $280. Ford doubled its market share in mere years. It was incredible. Analogies work because they make the unfamiliar familiar. They help the mind navigate new terrain by making it resemble terrain we already know. An analogy is like a metaphor where you explain a complex idea or a situation in terms or in a story that the other person can relate to and easily understand. Using analogies is my superpower. Being able to explain potentially complicated things in a really simple way for me is an art. Uh, one that I'm pretty good at, but I'm constantly working hard to get even better at. When you communicate properly, analogies convey everything from the urgency of an idea to even a simplifying a business strategy and something that I'm working on at the moment. The key is finding the proper analogy. And that can sometimes be difficult. The analogy comparison needs to fit the mold of exactly what you're attempting to accomplish. Because in most cases, it's best not to make the description so cliched that it's insulting. Just think about football commentators who say it's a game of two halves or the next goal wins. Well, of course the next goal wins because the more goals you score, the more likely you are to win. But you also don't want to be shrugged off and ignored because the analogies are too generic or don't really apply to your goal. So a quick lesson between an analogy versus a metaphor. There's no doubt that many people, including myself, get stuck from time to time regarding the difference between the two. It's a common mistake, but one that should be clarified to avoid any confusion with your audience and the potential poor perception of yourself. Here is the best and possibly easiest answer that I could find. So here we go, analogies. Comparing things so that you can see a relationship between them. There are many ways to do it, but the key thing is comparing one thing to another. Metaphors do this by saying something is something else. That test was murder. Obviously, it wasn't murder. That company was a sinking ship. Again, the company isn't actually a sinking ship. Or if you live in the States, there's one that I found, that campaign is an absolute dumpster fire. Well. A dumpster is a US reference for a bin. So you might want to say it was a complete bonfire, but I'm not sure that really works. So analogies are comparisons and metaphors are ways to make them. There are two 
basic things that you can use analogies for. One, understanding, which is kind of learning. And two is for problem solving. So the question you're probably asking yourself right now is, how do I create an analogy? Well, at this point, if you're wishing you paid more attention in English class, then it's not too late to hone your analogical talents. Leaders use analogies to explain some of the greatest change or potential transformations that are happening within their team or organizations. That's why Steve Jobs was so good at his job. But here are a few steps to help make it easier. Step one, write down a list of actions. Write them down so that you can compare them to your situation. This could be anything from planning a wedding to brushing your teeth. It doesn't really matter as long as the action doesn't seem to relate to your subject. Making coffee, doing the dishes, writing a book or checking emails. Step two, find similarities. Once you've created an analogy, it's time to write down as many similarities as you can think of. Use your imagination and have some fun with it. You'll find it much easier than it sounds. Then you need to gather examples. It's easier to be creative with your analogies when you have some inspiration to work with. One trick is to simply look for analogies as you read. Circle them when reading a magazine. When reading a book, I fold over the bottom right-hand corner of the page because then when the book's closed or I know that there's something in that I want to look at because it's been insightful or will help me with productivity, I know exactly where to go to. I use those to help create my analogies. And finally, just be aware of more things. In general, exploring and reading and traveling and diversifying your own experience as well as cultivating diversity of experience in all of the people that you collaborate with. These are keys to helping master the art of analogy. Now, I'm sure if you've watched Forrest Gump, you'll have probably heard one of the most famous lines that sums up analogies perfectly. Can you remember what it is? Okay, I'll tell you. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Remember that? Great movie. And I love it when he's just running through the fields. It just makes me want to go out and run, although I know it's far more tiring than he lets on. While it is obvious, it paints the picture perfectly. Because remember this, analogies should be simple and easy to remember. The best analogies are familiar. In fact, I'm known at work for using analogies. And in fact, some of my friends at work have got a bingo style list of ones that I use. Now here's one of my favorites. Pin the tail on the donkey when the donkey doesn't exist. What that's trying to show is that if you're trying to do something, but you haven't outlined where you're trying to get to or what you're trying to do, what are you meant to do? Now in that example, the tail that goes on the outline of the donkey, if you haven't drawn the donkey, then where does it go? It also harks back to the children's game, Pin the Tail on the Donkey. The Latvian police, harsh, harsh but fair. Now, I've never been in trouble with the police in Latvia, but I know that they can be very harsh, but also very fair. One of my favorites, although you need to be careful who you release it to, are that went down like a shit sandwich. Well, that implies that the nasty sandwich wasn't very well received. And to be fair, you wouldn't want it if it was a particularly horrible sandwich. Obviously, being in the right place to use this analogy is key. Now, one of the most famous ones that you will probably come across if you were to Google this is, you cannot shoot a cannon from a canoe. Now, what that means is if you imagine a cannon in a canoe, you've got this enormous gun, basically, in a very small boat. And the whole point of the analogy is saying, if you have a weak base, the chances are the results you're gonna get are gonna be less than optimal. I think if you were actually to fire that cannon, the canoe would pretty much tip over or just dissipate. But here's a bonus tip. Save the analogies for the difficult and challenging concepts. Don't use them all the time, otherwise you will lose your audience. You've only got to look at management consultants who just talk in utter jargon and nonsense to realize that sometimes they can work against you. But they are hugely powerful. And when you get them right, they just open up a world of possibility. These are easily one of my most potent weapons in unleashing my ideas and articulating thoughts. But beware, because they don't always work. You need to take the time to practice creating your analogies and test them out with your colleagues. This will help you become an analogy superhero. And who doesn't want to become a superhero? 
But with all that bear in mind, please do check out this video here where I talk about the eight secrets to great leadership. And with that, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.